I have little experience with virtual reality. I've tried a couple public demos and a couple years ago I went to a VR experience with the family, but that's the extent of it. Despite this, when the MetaQuest 3 was announced and then subsequently the Apple Vision Pro, I was curious to see how far the tech had come in the past couple years. So I went out and spent, I think about 950 Canadian dollars for the MetaQuest 3. Let me check. Oh, I was right. $952.77 to buy the MetaQuest 3. Now, after having spent about a week with it, I have uh, mixed feelings. So let's talk about it. Right from the unboxing, it's pretty clear that Meta has put thought into making the setup simple and straightforward. This, I would say, is especially important in the category of VR since it's a computing experience that's foreign to most people. And so if the goal is wide adoption, then it's in their best interest to make the experience as intuitive as possible. In the box, you can find the headset itself, two controllers, a charging cable, and power adapter. I was able to jump in right away since the headset I had purchased already came partially charged. To be comfortable in the headset, there are three adjustments you need to make. The first is to the straps themselves for a snug fit. The second is to the IPD or interpupillary distance scroll, and you can find your IPD with third-party apps. And the third is the depth adjustment, which you can set with these buttons at the temples. Normally, you'd want the headset to be as close to your face as possible, but because I wear glasses, I set it to the most distance setting. I was actually quite surprised to find out that I could wear the headset with glasses, and if you have glasses, you're gonna need to put them on to have the best experience. Because what I found is that without glasses, everything just looks blurry. Of course, wearing glasses has its own disadvantages, the main thing being the discomfort. After 30 minutes to an hour, I needed a break because of the pressure on your face. You could get prescription inserts from Meta and other companies if you plan to wear this for an extended amount of time. I would definitely recommend it. You'd also probably benefit from the Elite strap that Meta sells because what I found is that after an hour of gameplay, the back of my head begins to hurt from all the forward weight. Now the first thing you see as you put on the headset is not virtual reality, instead it's a rendering of the space around you, what Meta calls pass-through mode. I was quite impressed with the video quality of pass-through despite its imperfections. The image is a bit grainy, especially in low light, and there's a bit of warping around the corners and edges. I could somewhat use my phone in this mode, but it's definitely a strain. Regardless, it's good enough to walk around your house and not bump into things. I was even able to do laundry and dishes while having YouTube follow me around, so it's pretty fun. Now, of course, as with any computer, the technical ability of the, of the computer is one thing, but I would say that half or even more than half of what makes the experience are the apps that developers are creative enough to make. So let's talk about some of them. By far, what I was most looking forward to on the Quest 3 was enhancing my work setup, and the Quest 3 certainly delivered in that regard. Using the app Horizons Workspaces and pairing the Quest 3 with my MacBook, I was able to have three massive screens surround me. It was very impressive, and the video does not do the experience justice. It immersed me in the work I was doing, and if I wanted, I could go totally virtual as well. Some of my other favorite applications on the Quest 3 include Trip, which is a meditation app that allows you to practice breath work while surrounded by this astral type environment. Big Screen, which is an app that allows you to watch movies in a cinema sized screen. You can even invite friends to the space or join other people's rooms for a more social experience. I surprisingly also had a lot of fun with the demo game that comes included with the Quest 3 First Encounters. It's very well done. It really flexes the power of mixed reality when done right. The game transforms your space into this fortress that's being invaded by these cute little fur balls that you have to shoot and trap. And of course, there are tons of other applications that you just have to try for yourself. Now, as fun as the Quest 3 was to try, there are definitely some things that I didn't like about it, and I want to talk about that. My biggest gripe had to do with comfort. After about 30 minutes to an hour of use, as I had mentioned, I end up with eye soreness and head fatigue. And at this point of the technology, I can't see people working all day in a virtual environment as Meta is suggesting. To add to this, when using applications that involve movement, I ended up with motion sickness, which is surprisingly not uncommon. Then there's the hand tracking. 
You're supposed to be able to navigate the main browser using just hand gestures, but this feature only works sometimes, and so almost always I ended up using the controllers. Then there are the things that other people had an issue with that I didn't really mind. Firstly, this small battery. The headset will last about two hours on a full charge, but since I can't see myself using this thing for more than an hour, hour and a half tops, the small battery isn't actually that big an issue. I also found the headset to heat up after about an hour of use, but it didn't really impact my comfort. And there are also people complaining about how the screens are LCD as opposed to OLED. But since this is my first foray into VR, I still found the graphics to be super immersive despite this. So to wrap up this review, I would say that my experience with the Quest 3 has been incredible. It's crazy to see just how far VR has come, especially with mixed reality. At this point though, I can't see myself using this just because it's not as comfortable as I would like it to be. And for the price of $950, I would assume that for most people, it's something that they would have to really sit down and consider as opposed to just impulse buy. After a couple years though, once the comfort and mixed reality aspects have been significantly improved, I may reconsider, but for now, I'm gonna have to pass on the Quest 3. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.